the collect from the bulletin. The collect is for the sixth Sunday after Trinity. All together now. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will now have the scripture reading. Today's scripture reading is taken from Ezekiel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. And as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I sent you to the people of Israel, to nations of rebels, who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants also are impudent and stubborn. I sent, to you, I sent you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, be not afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns are with you, and you sit on scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. And you shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you, be not rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. And when I looked, behold, a hand was stretched out to me. And behold, a scroll of a book was in it. And he spread it before me. And he had writing on the front and on the back. And there were written on it words of lamentation and mourning and woe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, good morning, church. Well, last season, the first part of the Trinity season, the sermon series theme was Every Day in Bethel. The intent is to know that spiritual warfare is a real thing. The sermon series also covers some truth, like prayer, put on the armor of God to equip us to face our daily spiritual battle. Today's sermon is the beginning of part two of the Trinity season. In total, there are four sermons. The theme for the new sermon series is Everyday Prophecy. When we talk about the word of prophecy in this sermon series, we are referring to more to the proclamation of the word of God. For this series, we are examining four prophets to see how we can respond to God's call. God is calling you to do something. Will you answer the call? Are you dragging your feet and hoping that God will ask someone else? When we do not answer God's call, we are saying we know better than God does. God is not going to call us to do something without providing us with everything we need to accomplish His work. Do accept the power and the importance of God's presence in our life, the Spirit of God. God is asking for our participation to do what He wants us to do. Will we answer Him? Let us pray. Father God, may your word this morning guide us and show us how to live our life that is pleasing to you as we reflect on the life of Ezekiel. Father, Lord, be with us 
and enlighten us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, church, think about the people of the ancient past and perhaps the presence who came among us and shared the word of prophecy, shared the word of God. They share words that has encouraged us, share words that has challenged us, share words that has called us back to the holy relationship with God. And in that holy relationship with God, He has reminded us that we are God's people. In each of us, in our faithful response to that journey, to that life as God's people, there is in those moments in our history where we have been called to the essence of our faith that lift us up, that motivate us to have a deeper relationship with God. And it is this essence of faith that calls the people of St. John Chapel to be in her very assistant 152 years ago. In fact, our church history traced all the way back to 152 years ago and not 140 years ago. I will explain later. And recently, I discovered that we have a fifth generation family since the founding of St. John Church who is still attending our church faithfully. We also have a fourth generation family in this church. Guess who are these people? It is those words of prophecy, those who have prophesied to us and led us to such a time as this. As such, we must not give up hope. We must not give up the mission we have been called to proclaim Christ through faith, hope, and love. Today, God's word comes from the book of Ezekiel, not one of the books of prophets we often preach from. The word of the prophet Ezekiel speak to God's holy nation, Israel. We heard those words read earlier by Esther in chapter 2. Interestingly, the opening words of chapter 1 and chapter 2 tell us an important information about Ezekiel. The time that God called Ezekiel to speak to his people is a time when he is facing pain and distress. Why is he facing pain and distress? In chapter 1, we found that it is Ezekiel's 30th birthday, but there is no party any cause for celebration was ripped off from this young priest-to-be when he was carried off into exile during the first Babylonian attack. Five years into exile, we find him sitting on the bank of an irrigation canal near the Israelites refugee camp outside of Babylon. It is here on his 30th birthday, the year he would have been installed as a priest, that he received his prophetic calling from God. It is not the kind of romantic size missionary calling we tend to envision. Not only were he not to get to carry out his priestly duty in a temple, something he would have waited for his whole life, but he would have to act as a mouthpiece of God, warning Israel of their pending doom. He is to preach judgment against his Israelites' exile, his fellow brethren, predicting the fall of Jerusalem and their beloved temple. This would be devastating news for our young priest training. The temple was the center of Israel's religious life and the place of divine presence, how could they continue as God's people if the temple were destroyed? To make things worse, God tells him that his people 
will not listen to his message. Why? Because their hearts are so hard. He would have to preach judgment against his own people day in and day out, knowing that he would not see any converts. In our own standard, KPI zero, no return. How depressing and stressful. Though Ezekiel is facing pain and distress, physically and emotionally over all this, but he has been a tireless prophet. That tireless one who called his people back from resistance, back from rebellion, as God's people has been a rebellious nation in their relationship with God. Ezekiel is facing pain and distress. He has been the prophet that has been consistent in speaking truth about God to his people. And right in the beginning of chapter 2, the prophets received his prophetic calling and commissioning from God. He says that Ezekiel cannot even master his own energy to get up on his own. What happened? The Spirit of God enters him and lifts him out to his feet. In the lifting out of his feet, that same Spirit gives him courage and conviction to hear what God speaks to him. Go to my people, the rebellious nation, and remind them that I am their God and call them one more time to the centrality of what it means to be the people of God. It is also says that the same Spirit, Ezekiel, the same Spirit gives Ezekiel courage and persistence to get up from his pain and distress to speak the truth, reminding his people of their relationship with God. He says that in those moments of Ezekiel prophecy, whether his people hear the word of God or not, whether they respond to the word of God or not, his job is to just speak the word of prophecy, just speak the word of God. Ezekiel's role is not to see what might come out of his word, but his role is to just speak the word of God to call his people back to the Almighty God who created all in the beginning of time. Our world is full of challenges. Sometimes, like Ezekiel, we are feeling pain and distress. Pain and distress from servicing our car loan and our housing loan, raising money to pay our study loan for some of us, caring for our elderly parents and children, facing challenges from work and study, being pressurized to perform and meet a KPI. We are feeling pain and distress. But the prophet Ezekiel challenges us this morning. Regardless of the outcome, the job of our role of a prophet in this world, in this time, is to use our voice to speak the truth. Do not resist, do not react to Ezekiel's request from those moments when we are feeling pain and distress and asking ourselves, why God? Instead, we should ask ourselves, why not God? Why not use us in our persistence to prophesy? Why not use us to prophesy since we have the fullness of the prophecy of the changed world, the kingdom of God. Perhaps this is a time for us to step more fully into our faithfulness, to step more fully into our persistence, to step more fully into our response to the way in which the world is heading from bad to worse. We may react and say, hey, wait a minute, how do we know we have been called? The fact that we are here today is a sign that we have been called. God has called us for something and that is why we are here this morning. Remember the Great Commission, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, 
once we are a child of God, we are commissioned to proclaim the gospel. So, each of us here is a prophet, not just those who are serving in the church in a full-time capacity. Each of us has a prophecy that is offering to the world by the very living of our life. We are not called to step back. Maybe at this point of time, you are being called in a similar situation like Ezekiel, feeling pain and distress. Perhaps God is calling us to find another wing of the Holy Spirit, another wing of the Spirit to touch us, to lift us up, to encourage us, to get back up again, to stand up, to speak up, to shout up, and to find our voice in the midst of all this. Not just reacting or responding, but just speaking the Word of God about God's grace and God's affirmation of all His people. Yes, friend, it is tough, it is tiring, we feel pain and distress. I ask myself as a pastor and a teacher, yes, I do feel pain and distress. Pain and distress to meet ministry group, to get them focused on God's work in St. John Chapel, reminding everyone to do what God wants us to do, to develop one another spiritually with, from within. When we develop from the inside out, with the help of the Holy Spirit, there will be a spiritual paradigm shift in our mindset, in the way we serve God through the church, not as a volunteer, but as a child of God, doing our Father's business with our brother and sister in Christ together. I'm also feeling pain and distress of working on church administrative matter. It takes up too much of my time from my pastoral matters. But the Spirit of God does not give up on me. The Spirit of God this day come to us in words of prophecy through the prophet of Ezekiel, who spoke thousands and thousands of years ago and called us to wake up from our slumber, to wake up and find and catch the wind of the Spirit one more time, to find the Spirit that will lift us up, to find the Spirit that will help us reclaim Christianity, to reclaim the Word of God from those who have hijacked it, from those who have stole the truth, and to reclaim this Christianity for ourselves. Not to let the Word of God be in the hands of those who want to drag us back into a time that is gone. Prophecy is not dragging us back. It is always about looking into the future, looking towards what it can be if we use our voice and our life to the power of good. That is the prophecy the prophet Ezekiel is speaking into the land of Israel. This is the same prophecy that we must speak to our land this day as we celebrate together to reclaim the secretness, the excellence of the gospel, and also find ways in which we reclaim that voice ourselves. Yes, we are feeling pain. We are, yes, we are feeling distress. Even some of us here are frightened to step outside our door to speak the truth. But we have a faith that is beyond that, a faith that moves beyond the limitation of our humanity. Why? Because we have a spirit that lives within us, a spirit that goes before us, around us, and surrounds us this day. Because our responsibility in word of prophecy is to speak it regardless of the outcome. Just as it was for Ezekiel, a job, our job is to just speak. And in our speaking, others will respond or react. How many times in our life we have responded and reacted to God? On this day, perhaps God is calling us beyond our response 
or reaction. Being the prophets of the world today, the prophets to our neighbours, the prophets to our friends, or the prophets to our enemy, and find ways with our words of prophecy to make Singapore the best place it could possibly be. Not perfect, but perhaps better than right now. Not just for me, not just for us, but for all people. To speak the word of prophecy, St. John Chapel has been doing that for 152 years. And we cannot turn back now. I would say is, the world needs St. John Chapel right now more than ever before. We can see the world is not much better than before. More innocent killing, more political conflicts, more wars, the general moral standard of the world is getting worse. And that is why we are here today to celebrate what God has been doing through the prophets of St. John Chapel since 1872, 152 years ago, to be precise. In 1872, Anglican church work was extended to Jurong by Reverend Gomez, the superintendent of St. Andrew's Mission, and Mr. Gyeok Roy Fiat. It was in 1884, 12 years later, 140 years ago, then we have our own church building, St. John Church, Jurong. We must not turn back. We must forever allow the Spirit to pick us up, even in the face of pain and distress. We are to put one foot in front of the other, together shoulder to shoulders, and move forward to a better land, to the promised land. We realize that Moses led his people to the very edge of the promised land, but never saw the outcome. Perhaps that is our job. Of course, I want to see the outcome. I want to see where God is taking us to. But my job is not to know where we are leading so that we can see. Our job is like Ezekiel, just to speak the truth and allow God to do what He wants to do. And that is why we gather here. And that is why we must continue to be a prophet. And that is why we must continue to prophesy about the new life, the new land, the new way, and the new understanding of God's love. Perhaps we think that being a prophet is not really my cup of tea. Then, we must reclaim the secrets and the holiness that live within us. Being a prophet is our purpose, is our mission. And that is why we must be a prophet today. Not just living the proclamation of the word of prophecy to Moses, the apostles, the church leaders, the church father, who were ultimately dying out. And that is why it's so important we gather here on Saturday and Sunday and on other days to be a prophet in the world, to inspire our generation and the generation beyond us that might continue to be a prophet in this world that seems to be going in the direction that I think they are not very Christian to me. As such, we are to continue to speak the truth to share our life and make a difference in the world. May we this day, 7th of July, especially those who have just got baptized, may we hold on to the dreams of what St. John Chapel can be, of what St. John Chapel must be, as we respond to the prophecy in our own life and the prophecy of what God has intended right from the beginning. And yes, like Ezekiel, we might ask ourselves, does my voice make a difference? The God whom we believe says this, get up, step out, and speak out, and do the work of prophecy. May we respond 
may we react, may we always be conscious that we are God's agents in the world this day. May it be so as we get up, set up, speak up and live up and be a people of love. There's this church is named after the beloved apostle, St. John Chapel. Let us pray. Let us just pause, just allow the word to speak to us this morning. Reminding us our calling. All of us, not those who are just working in the church full time, all of us are called to be of prophets, to speak up, to speak up the truth. And allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us and convict us. You may at this point want to make a commitment to the Lord that you want to be His spokesperson, to speak for Him. For Lord God, we are humble that you consider us worthy to be used in ways big and small to accomplish your will here on earth. So Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will help us respond without hesitation whenever we perceive your voice calling us to speak out the truth for you. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill us Empower us, restore us, strengthen us. Equip us with resources for our prophetic voice to reach out to our neighbours, our friends, our office, our schools for you. So Lord, we ask Lord that you continue to guide us and lead us Direct us, Lord, in your powerful and equipping name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.